Hello, and welcome to the next part in our chapter a day series, Working Through the Book of Genesis. If you've been following along with us, you've seen the journey that we've been taking, how we've been seeing God revealing his character and his nature to humanity through the story of Genesis. We see him as Elohim, as the God who creates. We see him as Yahweh, the covenant-keeping God, the one who makes his promises and sees them through. We see him as El Shaddai, God Almighty, the powerful one who is able to do everything that he says. We've been following the journey of a family that started with Abram and Sarai who were called out of their country to leave everything they knew to go to a place that God would show them. And we heard the promise, that promise which was building on the promise made in Genesis chapter 3 after humanity fell and was separated from God. This promise that he makes to Abram and Sarai saying that he would give them offspring and that offspring would become a great nation and that nation would be blessed and would be a blessing. That those who bless this nation would be blessed and those who dishonored this nation would be cursed and through this nation all the nations of the world would be blessed. We saw how God took them on a journey that seemed to be in spite of their physical circumstances because we had Abram and Sarai who could not have a child. Sarah was, Sarai was not able to have children. And yet God kept saying they would have a child together. And after over 25 years in their old age, God's promise comes to fruition with the birth of Isaac. We see the journey with Isaac and his wife Rebecca and how God reiterates the promise and enriches the promise as it passes along generation to generation. And then we came to Jacob and Esau, and we followed their journey, and Jacob and Leah and Rachel, and we followed that journey. And now in chapter 36, we sort of take almost a sidestep from the journey of this particular family line, but it's very important that we look at it. This is going to be a short video, because we're just going to look at some highlights in this chapter, but it's important for us to recognize it and consider what it means in the overall unveiling of God's plan and the revealing of God's character. So let's take a look at Genesis chapter 36. I'm going to tell you right now that we're not going to read through aloud all of the chapter, and there's a specific reason for that. This chapter, chapter 36, contains Esau's descendants, showing how Esau's wives their children, how their children had children, how they spread out in the region where they lived. And I don't want to butcher the names to your hearing, so we're going to look at specific things about this chapter that are worthy of recognition. So we are looking at Esau's descendants. And you may say, well, we've been focusing on Jacob because Jacob has the promise. Jacob is the one who's continuing the line. It's going through Jacob's line, not through his twin brother Esau. But it's important to understand here how this reveals part of God's covenant character. Because if you will recall, if you've been following with us, we came to that point in the story where Abram and Sarai could not have children. God had promised that he would continue the line through them, and that's how his promise would be manifested. And when they were unable to have children after a period of time, they took matters into their own hands. And Sarai took her servant Hagar and used her as a surrogate so that Abram could have a child. And Hagar became pregnant and had Ishmael. And we saw the problems that that caused in the family dynamic and also how God said, no, the promise was going to come through Abram and Sarai, not through Abram and someone else. But at the same time, God told Abram, God told Hagar that he was going to bless Ishmael 
that Ishmael would also be the father of a nation, would also be the father of princes, that God was blessing him as part of his promise as a descendant of Abram. And then as we follow the journey along, of course, we come to Jacob, and Jacob and Rebekah have, pardon me, Isaac and Rebekah have Jacob and Esau, their twin brothers. Now we're told as Rebekah is expecting the twins and is feeling all this tension and movement inside herself and beseeches the Lord what's going on, and he tells her that there are actually two nations within her. And she is told that the older will serve the younger. So what we see here is God honoring his promise and his prophecy. Because while the journey is going to continue on through Jacob's line, we have to see how God is at work in Esau. So in chapter 36, we take a look at how God fulfills his promise in Esau. Starting at verse 1, These are the generations of Esau, that is, Edom. Esau took his wives from the Canaanites, Anna, the daughter of Elon the Hittite, O Bilambana, the daughter of, Et, of Anha, the daughter of Zibion the Hevite, and Bashmath, Ishmael's daughter, the sister of Nebaioth. So we see the wives that he had, and then we're going to see his descendants. And as we go through, we see that his family grows and is blessed. We read in verse 6, Then Esau took his wives, his sons, his daughters, and all the members of his household, his livestock, all his beasts, and all his property that he had acquired in the land of Canaan. He went into a land away from his brother Jacob, for their possessions were too great for them to dwell together. The land of their sojournings could not support them because of their livestock. So Esau settled in the hill country of Seir. Esau is Edom. So we see that Esau is blessed. Esau is blessed materially. And this is necessary to fulfill the promise. Because you see, God made a promise as he made a prophecy to Isaac and Rebekah. That there were two nations, that Esau was going to become the father of a nation. If you recall, when the promise was reiterated to Isaac, when it was reiterated to Abram after his name was changed to Abraham, they were told not only would he be the father of a nation, but of nations. This was said to Abraham, this was said to Isaac. So we have Abraham has. Ishmael and Isaac, Ishmael is going to become the father of nations. Princes will come from him. That's a promise of God. Even though it's not the specific promise that will lead through to the deliverer, that will fulfill Genesis chapter 3's promise, it is part of the overall promise of God. The same promise was made to Isaac. So therefore, Isaac's descendants will become nations, plural. There will be Jacob that will be that specific nation through which all the nations of the world will receive their blessing through that line. But there is also the nation that will come from Esau. And we see that God blesses him materially, that his wealth expands. And as we read through, we see that he has descendants after descendants, a growing progeny that expands in his territory, taking over territory. This is important. We see that there are leaders, there are chiefs, there are rulers. 
we read, as we go through the names we see mentioned here in verse 31, these are the kings who reigned in the land of Edom before any king reigned over the Israelites. So we see a sense of their power. This is important because this gives us a doctrine we need to understand about blessing. And we're going to stop here and just reflect on this for a moment. Because oftentimes we think of blessing as reward. If you do this, you will receive rewards. And though there is a sense of that at times in the covenant relationship, we also need to understand that blessing is often the resource for the promise. So we see, for instance, in the journey of Abraham, in the journey of Isaac, in the journey of Jacob, in order for them to multiply and become the nation that they need to become to fulfill God's purpose, God blesses them with the material resources necessary to grow as a physical family, as a clan, as tribe, as tribes, plural. So this is what we see, how God provides and protects Jacob with his uncle Laban, who is constantly trying to keep resource from him, to keep him in a place of subservience, God blesses Jacob because it is necessary for Jacob's journey toward the promise. For Esau to develop into a nation, he needs to be blessed to have the resources necessary to multiply and become the people group that is part of God's plan for him. Oftentimes, God can be doing this with us. So we look at what God has blessed us with, and we need to ask ourselves, are we viewing it as a reward for our own works, or are we viewing it as a resource in order that God can fulfill promises he has made? So what do you have in your life, whether it's material, whether it's gifting, whether it's experience, whether it's position, do you view it as a reward, something that is your own, a benefit to you, or do you view it as that blessing given to resource you to do the part you are called to do in the promise of God? So, for instance, if we talk about material possessions, do we receive material possessions from the Lord as a reward or as a resource to do the practical work that God is calling us to do in the promise that he has given to his people. To love one another, to minister, to care for the brokenhearted, to look after the poor. Is that the reason we have it? The talents and skills and experience do we have, are they rewards for us to enjoy? Or are they resource because we are part of the working out of the promise of God? If we view it as resource, we begin to see it differently. Because now it's that which is entrusted to us to be part of something much, much greater than ourselves. Part of the promise. So the promise of God for the proclamation of the gospel. What blessings has he given you and I to make that possible? God has promised that he will be with us, that he will equip us. How is that working out? What are the blessings we have? Maybe it's the blessings of family. Maybe it's the blessings of our spiritual family. Maybe it's the blessings of the place we are in right now. Maybe it's the blessing of the time to sit under teaching and knowledge. Maybe it's those blessings. Stop viewing them as a reward, as a benefit to us, and instead view them as resource involved in God's promise fulfilling work because Esau is not being rewarded Esau is being blessed in order to fulfill the promise that God has made there is one other thing I want you to notice here in this chapter in chapter 36 and that is a familiar refrain 
that we have seen before in genealogies and it's important that it's here. One of the things that we see here is we don't see as much the length of days in this genealogy, but we see that refrain repeated over and over again. Bella died. Jobab died. Hashem died. Hadad died. Samla died. Shuel died. In the list of kings of these people who ruled, we see repeated over and over again, and they died, and they died. This is important for us to remember too. Because even in the midst of these generations, even in the midst of things that are happening, we cannot lose sight of the fact that the separation and sin's consequence is ever present. And he died. We have not yet been able to deal with this. That which was said in the beginning of Genesis, if you eat of the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you will surely die. Adam and Eve took the fruit in intentional disobedience to God. In seeking to separate themselves from God, they were separated from God. Entering into spiritual death at that moment by being removed from the intimate fellowship with the God of the universe experiencing physical death because from that moment on natural corruption and the consequence of sin put a, a clock in us right into our DNA that our days are numbered and our lifespans begin to shrink as we go through the narrative and then of course that possibility of being permanently and eternally separated from God in eternal death. So it is not simply the writing of the time, it is also becomes a reminder. No matter what is happening, who is kings, who is ruling, what is expanding, in the end, this still looms over all of us. So I encourage you to read through this chapter, do your best at trying to pronounce the names, work it through, see how God fulfills his promise, the promise made that Esau would become a nation, even though he's not in the promised line, God still honors this part of his promise. See how he is blessed as a resource for the promise. And note that constant reminder of our state outside of the redemptive work of God. I hope this is something that you can reflect on and you can find encouragement and something to to really wrestle with, I hope, today. We'd love to hear your feedback, any comments you have, and as always, if this encourages you, please share it with somebody else. Thank you, and God bless you.